Welcome back. Today's video is going to be about my ridiculous rig. So last week I posted a video about my first time shooting with the Canon 5D Mark IV professionally on the job and at the time I was using this ridiculous rig and a couple people asked if I would make a quick video explaining the rig. I did make it myself um, from piecemeal. I'll explain what that means. So I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of doing that. I'll talk about some of the parts that are contained within it and then some upgrades I've made along the way in the equipment to reduce the weight because obviously the one thing you're going to be concerned with in something like this is the weight. But first I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Today I'm shooting with my Canon 5D Mark IV and I'm using the Canon Connect app and my tablet as you can see here which is a really really cool feature. Um, one thing I love to be able to do as a I hate to use the word filmmaker but video maker uh, person that uses cameras is the ability to do everything myself. I've worked with a lot of people and I've been let down by a lot of people. I have a very small crew of guys that I actually trust to shoot with and the ability to make sure that I can control everything and shoot myself sometimes and shoot independently is, is really just it's where it's at with technology today. And as things are advancing with drones and sliders and motorized everything, um, gimbals, it's just, it's amazing what you can do if you take the time to learn to shoot, edit, um, and do everything yourself. So I'll talk more about that at the end of the video with my next project, but let's get into the rig. There is no name for this rig. There's no nomenclature for this rig. This is just the ridiculous rig. Um, I'm gonna go from the front end and work my way to the back. I'll take it a little bit apart and show you some things. I'll talk about why I got the parts that I did. So I think I've rambled enough, so let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna take off from the front is the map box. Um, map box and everything on here is attached through 15 millimeter rods. Let me hold it down here, sorry. Everything is attached through 15 millimeter rods, so you'll see 15 millimeter rod holes here and here. So the thing about a map box, what is the point of a map box? Well, the point of a map box typically is to do what this pedal does um, and block side light beams from distorting the image and taking away clarity. It also has the ability to uh, add glass to it. So 4x4 four four or 4x6, four 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter by 120 millimeter are your most standard sizes of glass and things you put in here is ND filters, um, grads, um, and uh, polarizers, um, just dehazer, whatever, you know, lots of different glass, warmers, coolers, uh, whatever the glass may be. So one thing you want to look into when getting a map box is how many slides it holds. Uh, the high-end map boxes, professional map boxes, can hold several different slides of glass. Um, this one only holds one, and some of them hold none, and we'll talk about those different levels. So the, the professional level that holds many, those map boxes go for between $1,500 and $10,000 or something ridiculous. Like, you know, that real professional end. Um, that's a real pro map box, and those are used in the front ends of good cameras with great glass and is used real slides. Um, to do basically attach those circular ND filters, which unfortunately I didn't bring any out, but that's what it represents. And I didn't bring the glass out either because I'm ill-prepared. Um, with this one, this was about 250, I think, maybe even less than that, maybe 175. It wasn't that expensive. One thing you're gonna notice actually on all of my parts is if, if you've been looking into rigs at all, you're gonna see the blue bullshit, um, the crappy, you know, I don't remember the name of it, but it's, it's plastic crap that's blue. I, here's my theory on gear. If you're going to buy gear, get good gear. Don't waste your money on crap. I mean, obviously, I can't afford a six-panel professional $1,500 map box. It just doesn't justify using a $3,000 uh, camera. So you got to kind of use and get what's within your in your array of equipment. So... Get a good one, don't get a crappy one, don't get high end. Matte box, slides glass, four by four, you get it. Uh, this one is a camera, I don't know, it's nameless to me, but it looks cool. As you'll notice in a lot of my gear, and I did this subconsciously, my color scheme is kind of red and um, black. Um, headphones are red and black, a lot of my gear is red and black. I, I just, I like to have good looking gear. Uh, it really makes a difference. Next thing is the handles. Um, these handles were $90, and you can feel the quality in, the, in these handles. I mean, were they worth $90 over ones that were 30 
probably not, but again, the $30 ones were the blue crappy ones, and I'm just not gonna walk around with that stuff. To me, when you walk around with that blue crappy gear, it screams to me that you don't really know what you're doing, and you're just buying stuff to make it look like you know what you're doing. So, um, let's see. Next kind of section, subsection, is the front end here, and I'll take it off so that we can talk about the different parts of it. Now this is um, detachable so that I can use a handheld rig if I don't want to have the whole back end. I can just kind of use just this, which is a nice feature to have. And, and the piece um, that kind of separates those two is this L bracket. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. But that is an offset bracket so that your shoulder is up and to the right or up and to the left, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. So getting into this section, um, some major important pieces are your handle, obviously your tripod, tripod mounting plate right here, um, and then your uprisers, and then your long bars along the base. Uh, these are small rig, 15 millimeter. Um, I think those are the cheap ones, small rig. I think that's actually what the company's called, so you can get away with the bars because they're just rods. I do have some uh, carbon fiber ones back here, but I really don't see a difference. In fact, the carbon fiber ones seem pretty cheap. So uh, on here, you'll notice also a monitor holder, and I went over this in the video. This actually holds my cell phone. Um, what it replaced, just that right there, is place this big monitor, the long cable, this stupid arm thing that these are awful. Like. Like you can tighten them, but then even the good ones, the Manfrotto ones, those are the ones you're gonna get, but the cheap ones are a joke. And again, all this plus an F970 on the front end of your rig is just like, you need to do the monopod thing. Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. <clears throat> the monopod thing is I have the tripod mounting base plate on the bottom, because if you wanna mount it to a tripod and actually just use this as like a rig setup. But if you're on the run and gun, being able to put a monopod in the base of that. And then while you have that shoulder rig, I got some beautiful shots last weekend um, that really looked really, really nice, a little stable. And what this gives you is that professional shake, not that jittery shake, that professional little sway that everybody's kind of looking for in that reality style um, shooting these days. Because if you shoot things handheld, you're just gonna get that kind of like jittery, you know what I'm talking about when you're out there. I mean, your hands are shaky. And again, if you're using any kind of zoom lens, remember that zoom is just going to be magnified every millimeter that you extend. It's really bad news bears. Uh, so now I can rig everything up through my cell phone, which is over there charging. Um, but yeah, so that's the front end of the rig. Oh, up top, uh, this I put my shotgun um, road video shotgun mic goes right up here goes over this guy so that's nice so that's the front end of probably uh, you'll just notice this bar right here again these are all just pieces I bought I bought these one piece at a time I bought this piece this I got a toolbox full of crap little parts and stuff like that uh, and I just get it one piece at a time new bars I had smaller bars up here um, and then I extended the bigger bars that I had back here that are replaced with the carbon fiber ones and you just move stuff around. I mean, it's really easy to just kind of release these, pull stuff apart. I mean, as an ex-military guy, I love black metal. <laughs> you know, all the guns are finished with it. It's very similar and pulling things apart. It's a lot like messing with guns. Um, so I like that. Oh, donut goes on the back of here. I forgot about that. Okay, moving to the back section. How are we doing on time? Nine minutes, great. So back section, uh, this is, as, I, as you see, detachable. And what this is really is a balance. So the back end of this is really heavy. And we'll notice a little bit of blue crap. Um, this is a, it's a transfer box for two F970s that power could power the monitor that I had down there if I needed it, um, but also powers the camera through an LPE6 battery. These, as I said in the video last week, shot for eight hours, could shoot for another eight. I haven't put them on the charger yet. It's nice because it drains one battery, then it drains the other battery. So you can replace, if you only have three batteries, you can replace one of the batteries and it'll keep you going for hours and hours. Um, I also will rig up um, just one of these 2000 milliamp um, battery chargers. 
to plug in my cell phone for my monitor just in case I don't want to kill that battery. I'm going to make sure my cell phone goes all day long. Or if I'm running a GoPro on top of it, other mic stuff, just extra power. Uh, I use this Blues Painters Tape. Um, if you're just kind of getting into the industry and learning, never use duct tape. Uh, avoid electrical tape. Use Painters Tape. Uh, my first kind of college professor drilled that into us every day about how we would make people clean off duct tape residue with alcohol pads if they used it on any of these cables. Um, shoulder pad. There's a lot of shoulder pad options out there. Um, I just didn't want one of those cheap, hunky things, so this one looks a little bit cool, and I can mount some stuff to it. It also bridges two different um, sets of rods in the back, which are joined here in the middle. Sits on here nicely. Helps balance out the front end of the weight and can power the entire rig. I've built it um, into a two-stage area so that I can attach. I have another one of those tripod mounting plates up here. Um, so that I can attach my zoom recorder, um, a place to just kind of lock down other audio equipment. I had a receiver the other day for a uh, wireless mic transmitter that was on there, and a little bit of tape on there or a screw. Because again, I have this whole box of tools with me most of the time. I can figure out a way to hatch things down. Zip ties work really well. And then back to this is just a JAG 35 offset elbow. Um, again, both 15 millimeter rods. Everything's 15 millimeter rods. And I mean, it's, it's really just a matter of, do you need a rig? And if you shoot a lot of video, it's a good thing to have. But then building it, I probably spent more, I probably spent enough to buy two rigs doing it this way, which is the absolute worst way you can do it. Um, you, if you have the money, chunk it down, spend $1,300, $1,400 on a good rig, and you'll be happy and everything will work right. Um, or you can do what I did and spend you know, $20 every couple of weeks for two years and just buy little bits and stuff and kind of build it along the way. It's just a hobby, but it turned into something. And then bringing on the shoot the other day, everybody on the shoot was like, oh, damn, it's a rig. So there's that. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to talk about on the map box end of things. The point of a map box is to use glass. I mean, if you're trying to block light, a pedal works pretty well. Other than just looking legitimate, the reason for using a matte box is, again, to use glass. If you use a zoom lens, you either don't zoom or you don't use glass, which defeats the purpose of both of the items that you're using. So matte boxes are really designed to be used with primes. And that's why Cine's, uh, and cinema is shot with primes, shit cine primes, because these things lock down in length and then they use the glass they need in front of it. Um, again, because notice through the front end of that, if I put glass through here, I can't use my zoom. So on a run and gun shoot, having a map box is kind of counterintuitive and to people who really know what's going on, it's like, eh, kind of silly, but who cares? I mean, it looks badass. It does block side light, dust, wind, um, and you can attach glass to it. So that's it. Uh, I guess if you're kind of on my channel, some of you guys in the class in the room for term interpretation know, and my friends on Facebook know, but I'll tell my uh, subscribers on YouTube as well. Over the next six months, starting on Veterans Day, as I am a United States veteran, and ending on Memorial Day, I will be traveling to all of the United States national parks. I will be filming them with a Mavic drone, uh, Canon 5D Mark IV, and um, 8 millimeter film. Um, and I'm going to be shooting a documentary called 22, The Veteran's Story, along the way covering veteran suicide and PTSD, kind of meeting up 10 years after the fact um, with my buddies that I deployed with to Afghanistan and Iraq. And I'm going to interview 22 um, of my former soldier friends and see where they're at in their lives today and how they've kind of responded to being a soldier in the Iraq and or Afghanistan war. So uh, you can stay tuned to my channel. I'll be definitely posting videos along the way. You can um, friend me on Facebook if you want to see more of my pictures and stuff like that. Check out my website, CoreyRowe.com, for my work links below. If you have any questions, definitely add them in the comment section. I, I mean, I'm, I'm gaining some subscribers and I enjoy it. I enjoy talking about this stuff, obviously. So if you have questions, you're just getting started. If there's something I can do to help you, uh, as you can see, someone asked me to make this video, I'll make this video. I enjoy doing this. So if you like the video, hit like. If not, hit thumbs down. Let me know what I did wrong. I'll be sure to delete your comment. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. This has made my whole rig about 
about a pound and a half lighter um, because I don't need an LPE6 or an F970 attached to the seven inch field monitor, which in itself is heavy. And I mean, this whole setup is just fantastic. So uh, one thing I wanted to point out back here is I have two.